Hi, we're here at Baker Barn and we're going to talk about dado uh, saws today and uh, dado cutting. We have two table saws at the, uh, at the Maker Barn. One is the uh, saw stop, which is the, uh, the main saw we use here. Saw stop's a nice saw. It'll, uh, it's, a, it's a safety type of uh, uh, flesh sensing type saw. It can uh, cut, uh, it, can, it can rip up to 52 inches wide. It's a very nicely built saw, but it does have a, a, a problem in that if you want to run a dado blade on it, which is only eight inches in diameter, you have to change out the entire uh, detector cartridge and the, you know brake cartridge that's on it. So you know, rather than do that, we have a dedicated saw. This is a, a Powermatic 66. It's an older saw. It's built probably 1972 or so. But it's very heavily built. It's an industrial type saw. The saw, being as an older type, doesn't have the safety features that the saw stop has. It doesn't have a, a riving knife. It does not have the flesh sensing technology. So this saw is not to be used for through cuts. It's just uh, dedicated to dado use. And uh, dados, uh, let me explain a little bit about a dado. A dado is a, a wide curve cut. And uh, this might be an example of a dado where you have a shelf, for instance, might want to fit in the side of a case or something, then you need to cut a kerf that will fit your shelf. Now, this one's a little loose, but uh, we're going to learn today how to make it fit very nicely. You want a little bit of clearance for the glue, but maybe not quite that much. And uh, let me you a little, show you a little bit about dados here. This is um, an example of some dado cuts. This is a 3 eighths, this is a quarter inch. Now this eighth inch one was actually cut on the saw stop. The narrowest we can cut with a dado blade is quarter inch. So if you want anything below a quarter inch, go to the saw stop and, and use multiple passes. But uh, also the uh, dado can be set wide and with a special fence attachment, we can cut uh, rabbit cuts like this. So it works pretty good. Usually a dado cut these are about half and way. Generally, dado cuts are about a third of the way through the wood. It all depends upon your design, how, that's, how you're going to use that. But uh, let's get started uh, and uh, we'll get out the dado set and I'll show you that. All right, we've got, uh, here we've got a DeWalt dado set. This is a stack dado set. They make dados different ways. They went from wobble types and some other kinds, but uh, we use just a simple stacked set. And uh, when you open this, by the way, make sure that the DeWalt's part is up because otherwise you have parts that will fall out. The dado set consists of uh, the main blades. These are typically called plates. They go on the outside of the, of the stack. We got chippers. These go on the inside of the stack and remove the wood that's on the inside of the cut. And uh, then we've got some little spacers. These shims, they're, uh, we have got five thousandths, ten thousandths, and 20 thousandths thick, and they can allow you to adjust the dado stack so it's just what you want. So let me uh, take these out. It's important to note that any dado stack that you put on a saw must use both of these blades. And they look like a normal saw blade, but the truth is they are not. They, they, they only cut on one side. They cut on the side, you see the logo, that's the side they cut on. So this is the side that goes out. So when we stack these, you notice there's a little safety spacer between. When we stack these, they would go like this. So when you see it on the saw, you'll see the, um, the logo on the outside in both cases. And of course, the, the cut's go, coming this way. And uh, whenever you mount these on the saw, make, keep in mind that these are carbide teeth. They're very brittle. So when you stack any of these, you stack the, <coughs> the uh, chippers in there, make sure that these teeth don't touch one another because they can chip one another and, uh, and ruin the data set. So I'll set these off to the side. And uh, I'll get out some chippers. The chippers are interesting. They're, uh, they just have four wings on it. There's eighth inch. There's four eighth inch plates. There's a uh, one sixteenth inch plate. And there's a, a three thirty seconds. So we got yeah, four, four eighth inch ones, which would stack up to a uh, half inch. And then um, 
We've got uh, three thirty seconds and a sixteenth. So all these together, you can stack. You can make a stack that's almost that's almost any width that you want. And with the aid of the shims, uh, you can get right where you want need to be. So we'll uh, we'll learn how to put, set up the stack next. All right, here we are. I, what I've, I've put a piece of white paper on the table saw top just to make it a little easier to see. What we're going to do is stack up of our blades. This, what we want to do is make a slot in our workpiece that will fit this panel very nicely. So I'm going to set this right like, like this. And, uh, you know, we've got a plate on one side. This little plate will go on the other side, and we'll put the, the chippers in between. So uh, I know that this is a, about a half an inch, not quite. So uh, I'm going to have to have, say, an eighth inch. So I'll put an eighth inch chipper in there. Got to be careful of those teeth. And I'm going to try a 330 seconds. For a normal piece of plywood, this should be very close. And then I'll put the outer blade on. The reason I don't stack the two outer blades and put the chippers on top is because the chippers, if you take a look, the chipper tooth is actually wider than the body. The, the spacing that it makes is is controlled by the body, not by the by, not by the tooth. The tooth is a little bit wider, so you could use those uh, spacers, use the uh, shims between them. Anyway, I'll check this out. I got a little piece of wood here, and and uh, I'll look at it real carefully. Like it's it is very close. I'm gonna add just a little bit to it. Uh, so we'll set this aside, and I'll get a, a 5,000 shim. I set the 5,000 shim on there. All right, that's just about perfect. That'd be just about perfect. Okay, so. I've got a stack that's the same width as this. Maybe what I should do is add maybe another ten thousandths because if it's too tight, um, we'll squeeze out all the glue trying to get the thing assembled. So we need about ten thousandths of clearance. So that means I'll take and put another ten thousandths shim in here and get, just kind of test this and see. He says some little dents and you got to be kind of careful. Let's see. Press that down nice and tight. You know, it's being pressed together really well because of the nut that holds the. Oh yeah, that's that's. I can feel I can feel the, the tooth, but just skip over a little bit. So, that's pretty good right there. So, this is our stack. This stack should fit this very well. And our next step is to take this stack, stack and mount it in the machine. All right. Let's load the dado blade into the saw. Uh, this is a uh, zero clearance type of insert. And uh, it, it may be, if you use a big dado stack, you may actually have to shave a little bit off of there. That's OK. Just bring the blade up through it. Usually you put the uh, fence over part of it to hold the, the uh, plate down. And then you bring the saw up in, through it and uh, cut whatever you need. That's fine. Take off the uh, nut and washer here. Let's take a look at the blades here. We've got a stack. Okay, good. It's stacked. This is a left-hand blade. I can see by the arrow, by the way these teeth are pointing. This would go on here. And uh, our, two, we have our two shims. I'll go ahead and put on a uh, a chipper, and uh, well, hang on a second. Let me stop for a second here. Um, what I'll do first of all, to make it easier, these, these shims are, are very thin, and they'll actually fall down into the the grooves uh, on the threaded uh, arbor. So to avoid that, we want to want to take and put a little bit 
a little dab of grease on the side of the of the chipper. Use it's kind of like a temporary glue, so I can put that on there so it's right on the center, and then I can place this on there, and I don't have to worry about the shim catching in the grooves on that uh, on that threaded shaft. And I'll do the same thing with this one. Remember, make sure these point the correct dire distance, uh, the correct direction, and put a little dab. Don't put too much grease because it might get on your woodwork. That would not be good. I understand WD-40 would work too. I haven't ever tried that. Okay. And that kind of holds it in place. So we can push it on. All right, now. Now we'll put on the outer plate. Remember, you always have to use both inner and outer plates. And I'll make sure it's nice and stable. It doesn't rock. And I don't have any of the teeth hitting each other. Okay. Washer. Nut. Now let me raise this. It's a lot easier if you raise this up a bit. I keep forgetting to do that, but started. If you're tightening something, just make sure that those teeth are not, not hitting each other. Okay. I'll use this little device to hold the blade. On older saws like this, they don't have a, you can't use a wrench on, on the back of the blade. All right. And I'll tighten it up. That's plenty good. drop it down and the next step will actually be to set the height and uh, cut our workpiece. Okay, we're going to set the height now um, and uh, I'm going to use this little gauge here, a little wixie gauge. This is over uh, in the machinist area, you can borrow it from there and uh, turn it on and make sure that when it's down on the table here it reads zero. So now I can take it and I can set it, I'm going to set it at 250 thousandths, quarter inch. Now 249, that's pretty close. And what I'll do is I'll raise the blade until it just touches the tip of the, of the tooth. I think that's pretty good right there. I'm going to lock the height on the saw and we'll set this to the side out of harm's way. Now let's see, let me go grab a piece of wood. We'll use this to test. It's got a dado cut on this side. We'll cut one over here and I'll, I'll move the fence, use the fence for this cut. And uh, let's make it two inches. Now on this saw with this fence, it's two inches from this side. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's two inches from this side of the blade to two inches here when I set it here. Uh, the reason is is that the blade, this, this edge is always going to be in the same place, but this will, will depends upon your dado stack with that. So anyway, if I set this at two inches, I'm going to be making it precisely two inches from the left side of the blade to the fence. So you can, you can make marks, you can do other ways, but that's, that's a good way of doing it. And uh, I'll take my badge and insert it in the machine, enable the... The saw has to uh, go through like a little boot up. It's got a, a variable frequency drive on it. There we go. Saw's alive now. And uh, I'll go ahead and make the cut. It's always a good idea to use these. Don't ever use your hands. I know that the blade, the blade is not going to come through here, but there's not a whole lot of wood between you and the blade. So always use push blocks. 
and keep the saw down or keep your work down on the tables uh, otherwise you may end up with an inaccurate depth of cut all right now we need to test it all right just the right amount of uh, room for some some uh, glue. I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. Hey, that's there's not much more to it than that. Uh, when you're done with the uh, with the dado, make sure you uh, you know, remove your card for safety. Whenever your card is out of that out of the card reader, the saw is shut down and it's safe. And uh, put it away to be sure to put it back away. When you put it away, make sure that you rotate the, the chippers such that you'll, you'll not have any chipper uh, teeth on top of the other teeth below. And that's all there is to it. Thanks a lot.